Could someone shut the door, please? Thank you. Maybe someone sitting on that side could shut the door. Thank you very much. Excellent. So we have our uh, second two uh, semi-finalists in place to talk to the motion this house believes that renewable energy projects cause more harm to the environment than good and for the motion is Hermitage Academy that's Cameron King, Rebecca Friels and Ryan Brown and against the motion is Charleston Academy that's Morvin Carmichael, Jemima Morris and Cameron Cochran. So I would like to now invite the first speaker to open the debate for the proposition from Hermitage. Good morning, ladies and gent good afternoon, uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, honourable judges, fellow debaters and Madam Chair. I am here today to start our argument on why renewables do more harm than good. I will start off this debate by giving some of my own points. My colleague Rebecca will then continue some of these points and then Ryan will finish our points off. My points today will be about general environmental issues about a couple of renewable energies. But first, we as a proposition would like to make it clear that we are not against renewable energy. That, but we are against renewable energies that, that do harm to the environment and are solely in favour of finding a clean energy source that does not harm the environment. My first point, I will tell you about the birds and the bats. The impact of wind terrains on wildlife, most notably on birds and bats, has been widely documented in studies. A recent National Wind Coordinating Committee review of peer-reviewed research found evidence of bird and bat deaths as well um, from collisions with wind turbines and due to the changes in air pressure caused by the spinning turbines, as well as habit disruption. Yes? Um, cats surely kill more birds and bats than wind turbines. Well, um, the wind turbines kill 1% of birds and bats, and in Scotland that's roughly about 140,000, so I don't think so. A recent yeah, has found evidence of bird and bat deaths from collisions with wind turbines. Sound and visual impact are two main public health and community concerns associated with operating wind turbines. Most of the sound generated by wind turbines is aerodynamic, caused by the movement of turbine blades through the air. Noise pollution coming from a large wind turbine is usually the most talked about environmental drawback of, use, of using wind turbines. The modern turbines are usually large with huge blades and in areas with high wind speeds, they are able to produce big noise levels. Wind turbines have seriously improved their efficiency in the last couple of years, but this sadly is not the case with the levels of noise that are still significant. What this means is that, noise, is that the noise pollution still remains the biggest environmental drawback connected to wind turbines. There is also mechanical sound generated from by the turbine itself. Overall sound levels depend on sound vibration issues. It is important for wind turbine developers to take these community concerns seriously. By following, yes? Fossil fuel power plants cause much more noise pollution than uh, renewables and wind turbines. We clearly stated at the start we are not for fossil fuels, only for um, renewables that do not harm the environment. When people think about wind turbines, they think of about a small field with two or three turbines. Well, what you actually get is masses of industrial scale turbines taking up acres of land, destroying habitats, and causing noise pollution. My final point will be about hydropower. The size of the reservoir created by a hydroelectric project can vary widely, depending largely on the size of the hydroelectric generators and the topography of the land. At one extreme, the large Balbina hydroelectric plant, which was built on a flat area of Brazil, more than 2,000 acres per um, megawatt. In contrast, a small 10 megawatt run of the one of the whole plant in a hilly location can use as little as 2.5 acres, equal to an acre of, uh, per megawatt. Flooding land for a hydroelectric reservoir has extreme environmental impact. It destroys forests, wildlife habitat, agricultural land, and scenic land. In many instances, such as the Three Gorges Dam in China, entire communities have also had to be relocated to make reservoirs. In these communities, it was about a million people. Um, Hydro-like facilities can still have a major impact on aquatic ecosystems. Fish and other organisms can be killed and injured by the turbine blades. Apart from direct contact, there can also be wildlife impacts, both within the dammed reservoirs and downstream from the facility. Reservoir water is usually more stagnant than normal river water. As a result, the reservoir will have higher than normal amounts of sediments and nutrients, which can cultivate an excess of algae and other aquatic weeds. 
These weeds can crowd out other rival animal and plant life, and they be, must be controlled through manual harvesting or by introducing fish to eat these plants. Ladies and gentlemen, these two renewables are reason enough that renewables do more harm than good and are the reason we beg you to oppose. Thank you very much indeed, Hermitage. And now I'd like to invite the first opposition speaker to outline their case from Charleston. Madam Chair, judges, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen, this House vehemently opposes the motion that renewable projects cause more harm to the environment than good. I'm going to convince you that renewable energy projects do an amazing amount of good and cause no harm to the world as a whole. My colleague, Ms. Carmichael, will go on to speak about the massive benefits renewable projects bring to the Scottish environment. It is essential for the life of our planet that we generate renewable energy. Climate change is real, and it's here. Everyone from politicians to comedians are concerned about the problem. Lenny Henry recently said, the global warming scenario is pretty grim. I'm not sure I like the idea of polar bears under a palm tree. This is not such a flippant remark when you think about what is happening to our climate. Frequent weather extremes, flooding and subsidence, rising sea levels, increased temperatures. The challenge to save our planet is immediate. We must act, and renewable energy is the solution. The amount of energy the world uses every day has trebled over the last century. To keep up with our greedy demand for energy, to heat our homes and to power our industries, power stations are burning more and more fossil fuels. As well as using up finite resources, yes please? I'd like to point out that the motion is not about fossil fuels, it is about renewables doing more harm than good. If you waited, I was going to say that these use up finite resources, which is a harmful process that releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Renewable energy generally produces no carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases, which are responsible for climate change. Renewables provide us with safe, green, constant energy that will last us far into the future. The Scottish Government knows how important it is to stop even more damage to our, government, to our planet, and the targets it has for renewable energy use will help stop the destruction. Renewable energy is key to our low-carbon energy future. Renewable energy is energy which comes from natural sources, such as sunlight, wind, rain, tides, wave, and geothermal heat. Renewable energy is the best way to save our planet. And believe you me, it needs saving. Take the Amazon rainforest, for example. It's disappearing before our very eyes. Species are dying out. According to the latest figures, 137 species every day. That's an astounding 50,000 species disappearing every year. And that's only one small part of our planet. This is simply not acceptable. If we don't do something soon, the human species will die out. Carbon-free renewable energy is what we need. Renewables do more good than harm. It's irrefutable. Renewable energy projects are providing the human race with plenty of opportunities to reverse the trend of disappearing species, disappearing habitats, and disappearing cures for diseases. Climate change is one of the biggest challenges facing the planet. The Kyoto Protocol is committing countries to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases. And since the protocol was signed in 2005, the UK has far exceeded the targets. How have we managed to achieve this? Simple. We have developed renewable projects that provide power without the nasty, polluting, toxic side effects of fossil fuels. How can the proposition claim that renewable energy projects cause more harm than good when the evidence against this is so clear? Dr. Zeus was ahead of the game when he said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Well, we in the opposition do care, and we know that renewable projects are providing the world with a resolution to the damage that the generations before us have caused. Fellow debaters, we are the future, and we must embrace renewable projects as a way to ensure that our future is clean, healthy, and secure. Ladies and gentlemen, judges, that is why I beg you to oppose the motion. Thank you very much, Charleston. And I'm now going to call on the second speaker to make the case for the proposition and hermitage. Ladies, gentlemen, honourable judges and Madam Chair, I'm Rebecca Friels and I'm here today to propose the motion that this, house, that this House believes that renewable energy projects cause more harm to the environment than good. I would like to start off by rebutting a few points made by Opposition Speaker 1. 
Nuclear is in fact the reason why we meet the target, as it's okay to... As, um, as the UK is 50% powered by nuclear. I would like to start off today with my first point, which is about hydroelectric dams and the fact that they cause so much more harm to the environment than good. Jesse Osabel, a, a professor of environmental science and the director of, human environment, of the Human Environment Programme at Rockefeller University in New York, has lead research into hydroelectric dams and has concluded that hydroelectric energy is the least efficient of any pro energy production methods and the most damaging to the landscape. Each hydroelectric dam can only produce 0.1 watts per square metre of land. The largest dam, the Three Gorges Power Station, at the Yangtze River in China, stores billions of cubic metres of water, submerging land that was previously home to more than one million people. Surely this is a lot more harm to people than other possible methods of generating energy. My second point is about biofuel crops and other forms of renewables and their effect on the landscape. Wind energy and biofuel biofuel crops fared better in the study, with both generating around 1.2 watts per square metre. Leading the renewable energy sources were solar cells, which use sunlight to create electricity, at around 6 to 7 watts to a square metre. But these solar panels need to cover thousands of kilometres to produce a sufficient amount of energy. Accepted. A lot of these solar panels are placed in the desert where it's, um, there is lots of sunshine and not many animals live there because it's so hot. That's perfect for the environment. I'm sorry, does Scotland have any deserts? Still, solar panels would need to cover a massive area of 150,000 square kilometres to meet the whole of the USA's electricity demand for a year. To power New York City alone, it would take 12,000 square kilometres of space, which is about the size of the state Connecticut. A comparison of solar energy, accepted? Nobody is saying that we should rely on solar energy alone. There is many other forms of renewable energy that we can rely on, and none of these forms cause harm to the environment. I'll be talking about other forms of energy later. A comparison of solar energy with nuclear found that a hectare of photovoltaic cells was needed to produce the same amount of power as one litre of fuel in the core of a nuclear reactor would create. All of this land taken up by renewable projects would be devastating to Scotland's beautiful, diverse landscape, not accepted, such as Arthur's Seat, a lovely example of Scotland's landscape situated right outside of where we are debating today. When most people think of the way wind turbines affect the environment, they think of the production of wind turbines, but nobody thinks about how they are put up in the actual fields. They're mistaking pleasant landscaping with what could be a massive industrial transformation of the landscape. A leading environmental, uh, environmentalist has also stated that a fundamental credo of being green is that you cause minimal interference with the landscape. We should be farming less land, lodging, logging less forest, and troweling less ocean, disturbing the landscape less, and sparing land for nature. But all of these renewable sources of energy are incredibly invasive and aggressive with, but they are aggressive with regard to nature. No, thank you. Renewables may be renewable, but they are not green. The report, the report which another professor on Je Jesse, uh, the scientist I mentioned er earlier's team produced, which appears in the International Journal of Nuclear Governance, Economy and Ecolo Ecology Today, also criticised plans for widespread farming of biofuels. With current technology, the professor estimates the one to two hectares of land would be needed to produce fuel for each of the world's 700 metre cars and other motor vehicles. And a biomass generator would require 250,000 hectares of land to produce fuel to match the electricity output of a nuclear power station. Surely, using this much land to generate this 
small amount of energy is causing more damage to the environment than good. No, thank you. This professor concluded his work by saying, from an environmental point of view, the biofuels business is madness. My colleagues have presented to you with the facts and statistics needed to tell you the obvious fact that renewable energy projects cause more harm to the environment than good. Ladies and gentlemen, for these reasons, we as the proposition beg you to propose this motion. Thank you, Hermitage. I'm now going to call on the second speaker to make the case for the opposition from Charleston. Madam Chair, judges, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen, Scotland is an amazing country and we have an exciting, prosperous, safe, green future ahead of us, thanks to renewable energy projects, because they certainly do not do more harm than good to the environment. My colleague Mr Cochrane convinced you of the benefits of renewable energy is bringing to our planet, and I'm going to look at the ways in which renewable energy projects are proving positive for Scotland. We have amazing natural resources here in Scotland, and we are using them to produce renewable energy that is harmless to our environment. One extremely valuable industry in Scotland is tourism. The industry supports 200,000 jobs and generates over £4 billion a year. Scaremongers such as the American Donald Trump have said that onshore and offshore wind farms will cause the destruction of the tourist industry because they destroy the natural environment. Well, do the proposition really want to be on record as agreeing with a man like that? He's wrong, of course, as always. And the fact that he has pulled out plans to invade Aberdeen's coast proves that one renewable project has certainly done a lot of good. A more poll on visitors to Argyll Butte discovers that wind farms had no bad effects on tourism at all. Of those polled, 80% would actually love to visit a wind farm, and 91% stated that turbines made no difference to their visit to the beautiful countryside. Our minute 1% said the turbines had a negative effect on their visits and spoiled the environment. Well, there's always one, isn't there? With over 120,000 visitors to Whiteley, it's obvious that tourists are fascinated by renewables and want to find out what Scotland is doing to lead the way in expanding this energy for the future. Rather than harming the environment and putting visitors off, expansion of renewables in our landscape is increasing ecotourism. Many people consider wind turbines to be graceful, modern sculptures. In fact, the turbines on Gia have been named the Dancing Ladies, and they have not done anything to harm the beautiful island or any of the plants and animals on it. Yes, please. Do you consider 100, thousands of wind turbines clumped together to be graceful? Uh, a recent uh, uh, visitor to Whiteley Wind Farm, the biggest wind farm in Scotland, called them beautiful, modern, uh, elegant structures. So people obviously think they do. Uh, they do look beautiful. Let's consider the horrific alternative that actually would cause more harm than good. Thank goodness the plans for a coal-fired power station at Hunterston were scrapped in 2012. No, thank you. It would have caused terrible damage to the surrounding flora and fauna. It would have pumped out 8 million tonnes of carbon dioxide each year. It would destroy 95 hectares of important feeding grounds for water birds. That's the size of 148 football pitches. The coal power station would have caused visual, noise and air pollution. I can't imagine that's vis what visitors come to Scotland for. Yes, please. I'd again like to stress the motion is not about coal-fired power plants or any fossil fuels. It is, in fact, about renewable energy and the problems and maybe the benefits with them. Well, you and the proposition have dismissed all renewables. So what is there left to power of Scotland if you got rid of all of them? The only thing you have left is uh, fossil fuels if you don't want us living in caves again. No, thank you. Far better visitors to Scotland encounter the gentle whoosh-whoosh of turbines, carefully placed, than the noise and the smell of fossil fuel plants that are spewing out poison. Renewable energy will benefit the tourist industry because it will enable Scotland to stay clean, beautiful and healthy. Some people worry that the fishing industry will be affected by marine projects because they will pollute and disturb our waters. But this is just not true. Many in the industry welcome renewables. Yes, please. We, as the proposition, are proposing to use nuclear as a viable option and greener methods of renewable energy. 
Do you really think that blowing up half of Scotland is good for the environment? No, thank you. The community on Barra are concerned that the discovery of a rare coral in the waters on their island will scupper their plans to develop renewable energy from wind, <coughs> wave and tidal power. They go as far to say it would be as devastating as the Highland clearances. These fishermen, fishermen are making it crystal clear that they welcome marine energy projects with open arms. They have been connected to their environment that is providing them with a living for centuries and of course they would not want it harmed in any way. The Forestry Commission for Scotland is responsible for forests, woodland and open ground all over the country. They welcome renewables and are developing potential of Scotland's national forest estate for wind and hydropower and expanding the wood fuel at a bioenergy sector. They say that Scotland's forests are na a national treasure and it's their privilege to be looking after it. In fact, the fact that they are welcoming renewal projects is clear indication that no harm will be caused to our environment. Earlier this month, BT announced a £300 million deal to buy enough energy to meet its needs of all the Scottish operations for the next 20 years from the fallible rig. BT Scotland director Brendan Dick said that BT was keen to meet its energy needs in an environmentally responsible way. Energy Minister Fergus Ewing has com commented that it is great news for Scotland and the environment that a company the size of BT is sourcing its electricity in Scotland from a renewable and low carbon sources. Creating renewable energy projects will enable Scotland to reduce its reliance on polluting fossil fuels and keep the environment safe. Nobody in this room can deny that this is, having, this is a positive step towards ensuring the safety of our environment, not harming it. Scotland is packed full of the resources we need to produce renewable energy that reduces pollution, slows climate change and protects our environment. It is for these reasons that I beg you to oppose the motion. Thank you very much and I'm now going to move on to the uh, summation part of the debate and call on the third proposition speaker to sum up their case from Hermitage. Thank you. Good afternoon, honourable judges, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chair. My name is Ryan Brown and I'm here today to sum up the, pro the proposition's argument on why renewables do more harm than good. I will start off by rebutting some points made by the first opposition speaker, Cameron. He had stated that renewables were some of the safest and best methods. In fact, they take up too much land, they destroy habitats, and compared to nuclear, they are not the best option. I would then like to go on to rebut some of the second points by Morven. Uh, for instance, she probably was talking about the Chernobyl meltdown. Right now, it only affects 20 kilometres squared, all of which is full of wildlife and is starting to become a thriving community away from humans. Also, the Fukushima meltdown was caused by a natural disaster, which we in Scotland do not get. Also, we would like to stress, as, I, uh, as me and my team have said two times already, this motion is not about fossil fuels. It is about <coughs> if renewables do more harm than good, and if so, what should we use as an alternative? Now, I will move on to sum up my team's argument, starting with my colleague Cameron's speech. Cameron started by talking about wind power and how it affects the environment. Mostly how it affects bats and birds. I would first like to outline, if you were agreeing with the 1%, 1% of birds in Scotland is around about 140,000, so it's not a minute number to sweep aside. Then he went on to talk about how they are actually drawn to it with air pressure, and there is probably no way to change that. And ladies and gentlemen, noise pollution, which he also mentioned, is not a problem to be swept aside. It's one of the leading causes of animals and humans becoming deaf and a serious problem in the modern world. He then went on to talk about hydropower and its many flaws. For example, the Three Gorges Dam, which had to make one million people relocate, which is the equivalent of the whole of Glasgow and Edinburgh having to move to a different location. He also went on to talk about reservoir water being more stagnant than normal river water. Now this is a massive problem as it would kill off many varieties of fish and introduce too many types of algae, meaning we would have to maintain it, costing taxpayers more money and wasting a lot of time. <coughs> he, he also went, oh sorry, uh, Rebecca then went on to explain the further downfalls of hydropower. For instance, Jesse Osabel, a professor of environmental science, concluded a scientific study that hydropower was the most 
well, the most damaging to the landscape and also the least efficient energy source, including coal. She then went on to talk about, uh, sorry, she then went on to talk about the solar panels, uh, the solar panels you would need to get to power New York. You would need enough solar panels to fill the whole state of Connecticut to power just that one city. Also, a hectare of solar panels would be needed to produce the same as a litre of nuclear fuel. Also, she went on to explain the wind farms aren't just one or two sleek turbines. They are truthfully on an industrial scale, including hundreds of thousands of wind turbines in one location, which would not, in my opinion, nor the opposition, or the proposition's opinion, and many people, I believe, would not like to go and watch hundreds of metal rods in the air flapping around their fans. Also, furthermore, due to the renewable energy, we should be, oh, sorry, furthermore, due to renewable energy, we should be disturbing nature, we shouldn't be disturbing nature, less sparing all the land, but renewables are very intrusive and they take over habitats, destroying thousands and thousands of homes for these animals. And for these reasons, the proposition begs you to propose the motion. Thank you very much, Hermitage. And finally, um, I'm going to call on the third opposition speaker to sum up and close the debate from Charleston. Madam Chair, judges, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen, before I go on to refute some of the proposition's misguided arguments, let's take a walk through the future without renewables that they would have us live in. Look out over our once beautiful Scottish landscape. The view will be dreary, due to the constant rain, owing to climate change caused by carbon emissions, because we failed to see the clean, stable future that renewables offered. In the deserted farmland, there isn't an animal to be seen, no crops growing anywhere. The farmers have been unable to continue to farm the land of their ancestors due to extortionate energy costs. In the harbour, as the tide skulks in, you won't see harbour dolphins, no. They are long gone due to ocean acidification. The ocean is dead. This is certainly not a future the youth of Scotland want to be a part of. We want to be a part of a Scotland which preserves its wonderfully diverse environment. And renewable projects are already proving they can do this for us. The proposition claimed that wind turbines cause huge noise pollution, but surely the gentle whoosh-whoosh of a turbine is much more preferable to a rumbling power station polluting our stunning environment. And the proposition compared the effects of solar power to nuclear. However, I think everyone here would agree that Chernobyl had a much more destructive impact to the environment than solar power ever could. And Chernobyl doesn't affect humans anymore because it was so dangerous that everyone was relocated miles away or killed. It seems perfectly clear that renewable energy projects do not ca cause more harm to the environment than good. As my colleagues, Mr. Cochrane and Ms. Carmichael have established, renewables are doing so much good for Scotland and indeed the whole world. Mr. Cochrane shocked us with facts about the danger the planet is in from man-made disasters caused by finite fossil fuels which spew out poison. The benefits renewables provide to the environment are immeasurable. Companies such as Artemis Intelligent Power are creating amazing things to help our environment. Hydraulic transmissions are used for filthy foul things, but Artemis have changed all that and are producing hydraulic pumps and motor motors that keep our environment clean. Every company involved in renewable projects is committed to keeping our environment safe from harm. Take SSE Renewables, for example. They have a system called Our Responsible House that ensures no environmental impact is caused by producing and distributing energy. They are determined to act in a responsible and sustainable way. Renewables will provide energy that won't harm our environment. In the 1970s, one Saudi oil minister said, the Stone Age didn't end for lack of stone 
and the oil age will end long before the world runs out of oil. He was right, and it will end because renewables are offering us a clean, harmless alternative. Last month, Sir Richard Branson was speaking to delegates at the 14th All Energy Conference in Aberdeen. He told Callum Davidson of Highlands and Island Enterprises that to combat damage to the environment caused by climate change, we need more entrepreneurs in Scotland to get out and bring the dreams of renewable energy to reality. Scotland has an excess of the most abundant forms of power on earth, and we would be crazy not to embrace the use of them with open arms, because doing so will allow us to keep our environment safe. The proposition seems to think that renewables are causing harm, but Friends of the Earth, Greenpeace, the World Wide Fund for Nature, the National Trust for Scotland, and Save Scottish Seas are all welcoming renewables as a way to secure the environment and keep it safe for future generations. The proposition is saying no to renewable energy projects when they should be roaring yes. We should all say yes to renewable projects because they are right for the future security of our planet. It is therefore obvious that we must all oppose the motion. Thank you both teams. The debate has now closed and I think we should thank both um, Charleston and Hermitage for an excellent debate there. Thank you very much indeed. We are now going to have another break for the judges to deliberate and, uh, and come up with our two finalists. You are going to be split into two groups and taken on a tour of, uh, of this Parliament building, which I'm sure you're going to find hugely interesting. And uh, we will announce the two finalists at about half past two. So you're going to have about 20, just over 20 minutes to have your tour. And uh, if everyone could reconvene in here just after half past, but definitely before um, uh, 25 to three. Um, and I believe, Claire, the, do they know what groups they're in? Right, we're going to, we're going to split you into groups now and we'll, we'll move through this swiftly so we can keep to time, please. <laughs>